So type 1, we'll use the smart brush and the pixel persona for this exercise. Now the first image I will use is a photo of Dougie, that's my little dog. Lots of people ask about removing backgrounds from shots of people, often with complex edges. So this is the same and is basically just a few steps. Let's make a start. Select the image and make a copy and then paste it as a new layer. You probably don't want to directly edit your original photo. Rasterize the new layer, making it a pixel layer and deselect the original. Now remember, even on an iPad, you need to make the image as big as you're going to use it when it's finished. Once you rasterize an image, it locks the resolution in place so you can't enlarge it afterwards without getting it pixelated. So remember that if you've got an image and you really enlarge it and it's pixelated, you started with the wrong size. Once you have your size set, then rasterize the copy. Now switch to the pixel persona. We're going to use the smart selection brush here. And you can see it there, the little brush with a circle around it. See that? I've highlighted all of the, the uh, menus there so you can see it. And it's smart selection brush. Very easy to see. Now select the smart brush, snap to edges and set soft edges. Two options up the top there. Use a very small brush and zoom in so you can clearly see your selected area. I've set my brush to 110 pixels, but you will need to go down to at least 50 pixels. It's okay to use a smaller brush, you just need to be to use more brush strokes, is the word I'm looking for. Now you can see he's quite a lot of hairy edges on this dog. He's a very hairy little dog. You won't get all of those individual little hairs in. Not without a lot of fussing around, but there are ways of doing it. And you'll need that small brush. Zoom in and begin selecting the outline <coughs> of your subject. Quick strokes are best for this type of image. So you can't really see it there because I've already applied the, um, the refinement mask. But you can see by looking at that, I've gone around and selected the dog and then tapped refine. And you can see the dog, if you look really closely there, it's not too bad. This, you can still see the hairs around the edges. Select Refine. Carefully work on your image. You won't get all the hair in this case, if you're using something like My Little Duggy, but it's close. Um, images with smooth edges work perfectly for this. So tap the tick that's up the top to set it when you're ready. There's a tick and a cross at the top. Once you're in refine mode, you'll see a cross and a tick up there. You can see it says there, overlay matte selection. And just to the left of that, there's a cross and a tick. When you tap the tick, it sets the refinement. Now I've gone around the edges there and refined that as best as possible. There's our outline copied and pasted, you'll see it created a new layer just as we wanted. So select Edit, Copy and Paste. What that does, without touching anything else on the main image, you select Edit, Copy and Paste, and it pastes an image right in place of where you are. Then you deselect the original image. Unselect your first layer and just leave the copy. There's our Dougie with no background. We'll need to smooth the edges though, or not, depending on your destination for the image. If you see down the bottom left hand corner, there's a rubbish bin and a little cross shape. If you tap the cross, that will deselect the crawling ants that you'll see around the edge of Dougie still. Now you can see there's some slight colouring in his fur there, that's where the background's still showing through. And although it looks quite um, jaggy there at the moment. If you were to enlarge that with your fingers, you'll see it's not quite so bad. And then you can use your other tools to refine those edges so they're not quite so jaggy. Because what they are is actually a lot of his fur sticking out there still. So you can clean out the background colour from in there and leave his fur there. 
and you can put it onto another background if you like. Now you can see the only layer showing there that's selected is the copied layer and that's the one with Dougie on. That's your finished image. You can do what you like with that. You can copy that, make a new image with it, save it to your um, iPad or your desktop and do what you like with it. Now, type two, select the sample color, pixel persona. This is a really useful one for just getting rid of a white background, for example, or any color. That white could be pink, could be blue, could be anything. This is method two. This applies to almost any JPG or other image with a solid color background, most commonly white, but could be almost anything. Often when you buy files on the internet um, from places like Etsy and things like that, they'll come with a white background and you can easily get rid of that. Make sure your image is the size you want it to be. Remember I mentioned that? Then rasterize it. Or if it's not already, or if you don't know, it doesn't hurt to just tap rasterize. This will change it to a pixel image and locks the resolution. Remember that if you want to enlarge it later, you'll run into resolution problems. Select pixel persona again and select sampled color. Now that's in the one down the bottom, flood selection. And if you hold your pen tip on that, you'll get select sample color. On the desktop, it's in a slightly different location, but easy enough to find. And you're looking for select sampled color. Usually this will default to the background, which is white in this case. If you're unsure, just tap inside the background. Tap on the white there somewhere. That makes sure it's in the right one. The crawling ants will appear, and you can see them right around the edges there and around the edges of the pumpkins. And you can now tap the tick to set the selection. You can't see it there, but the tick, when you've got that first selection done, there'll be a tick on the top of the screen, same as before, ticking across. So you tap the tick and it will set the selection. Then select edit, then cut, and your background should disappear. Just like that. There's your work, no background. Remember to save it. Now, type three. That type one was, uh, okay, reasonably easy. Type two was really easy. Type three, create a clipping mask. And this one is itself quite easy. This is a great way to outline a single image out of a set of patterns. And you can see here, we're going to do the little brush set next to the mirror. There we go. So load your overall image in. Select the pen tool and outline your object. I've used two point width line here, but that may be too thick. But for this exercise, it's easy to see. Now you can see on the right hand side there, I've got the line option set at the top, the stroke. I've set it to two point. You could probably set it to one point or 0.5 of a point even. Only needs to be a thin line because you're going to remove it anyway. But I've done it here so it's easy to see. You might like to do the same. Now you can see you have two layers. One is the image layer and one the new curve. Because drawing that stroke around your object creates a curve. Now it's a continuous line, you know what happens if you stop drawing around a curve, you end up with multiple curves. We only want one here, and that's the one we've selected. And it's created a new layer. Now drag the image, your original image, into the mask. Your new, your new curve is a mask. Your image is now inside it, and you know how to do that, which removes all the other material you can see and just leaves the object you want. Now refine this by removing the outline by setting it to no fill and no line. See up the top there? There's actually, I've tapped the circle with the X in it, so there's no line around it now. There's your object. How nice is that? Clear background, single little object. 
You could do that with anything. You could do that with a dog. You can do it with what you like. But if you've got one curve, it can act as a mask to drag your object into it. Well, that's it. Pure and simple. Thanks for watching. I hope you gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Designer. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they'll appreciate it.